So first of all, Marco, thank you so much for inviting me again two years ago. Uh, I was here with my company. Um, I founded four companies, sold three, and now I changed sides. So um, I'm now investor and partner at Exange, um, an early stage fund. We're investing in seed and series A. 500 to 10 million, and um, leading also the German and European team for Exange. And I'm extremely happy that I'm here with Letizia from Greenly. Maybe you can also say hello. Sure. So uh, thank you all for, for joining this talk. So uh, I'm Letizia, I'm the COO of Greenly. Uh, so Greenly is an Exange portfolio company. We raised uh, uh, 21 million with them uh, last year, uh, which brings our total funding to 24 million. Um, and Greenly is the leading carbon management platform with 2,000 customers across 10 geographies. Uh, what we do is that we are on a mission to make carbon management accessible to all companies and to all of our users uh, by using technology to make it intuitive and turn our users into climate heroes uh, who can make a difference and reduce their emissions. So uh, today we are 160 employees, uh, and we have three offices in uh, the UK, the US, and France, which is our headquarters. Wow. So you really um, are something special in your space. You have more customers than anyone else. So, I mean, how did you do that, and what makes uh, Greenly so special? I think what makes us special is uh, our unique combination of uh, uh, technology and premium expertise. So expertise is needed. Uh, customers need support because climate is a topic that's pretty new. And so uh, we need to have people uh, taking our customers on this journey. However, having a people-heavy uh, business model can be a limit to scaling. And as Bill Gates says, on problems like uh, climate change, which is huge, we need solutions that scale. Uh, and we need technology for that. And that's why uh, we have built uh, this technology uh, to, to help our, our, our support and to basically make it very intuitive. So uh, we, want to, we want to make uh, carbon management super easy. This is a complex process, but thanks to technology, we can uh, improve it uh, and make it also personalized and verticalized so that you don't have the same platform if you're an investment fund or if you're a tech startup. Um, so we've built a very modular platform with uh, uh, modules depending on your industry. And, um, and so we, we really try to be consumer grade on the front end, but enterprise uh, grade on the back end, because I mean, the technology can also help being more precise. And that's very uh, uh, obvious when you, we everybody's talking about AI today. And what does AI rely on? Data. And so what we have, uh, having more customers than anyone else, is that we have the data on all of our customers, but also all of their supply chain. And this feeds our carbon engine and makes our product better, especially on everything that becomes verticalized, because our database is, feed with, is fed with all of uh, our, our customers' uh, data and or their suppliers, so we can analyze ver uh, with more granularity than anyone else. Nice. So, I mean, being part of such a high-growth startup, I know it myself, it's a pretty big job. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, how do you um, structure that uh, fast growth and um, also how do you organize yourself? Well, I mean, um, when you were a startup, so I, I joined Greenly uh, about two years ago uh, when they had 200 customers and now they have 2,000. Uh, so the question is how you uh, scale when you start as a little yes. startup. And I think there's a balance between uh, innovation and structuration. You want yes. to structure, you want to do things that scales, but at the same time, when you're on a zero to one journey, they tell you do things that don't scale, try everything uh, that you can. So I think the right balance is having the core team focused on something that is structured, that is what you know you do and that you improve, and isolate teams that innovate and that go crazy and try new stuff. And so that's what we're trying to do at Greenly because the, the, the market is very new. Uh, customers don't always know what they want and what they need. So we need to be always innovating, innovating, innovating. Uh, but at the same time, we need to build a structure for 2,000 customers and tomorrow can be 1 million. So, um, so yeah, so we need to have both. And the, the way we do that is by really isolating uh, the innovating part. Perfect. And how do you, uh, uh, let's say, manage yourself? Do you have like a tip 
how to uh, sustain your balance <laughs> in well, that craziness? I mean, it's a, it's a lot of work, a fast-growing environment of a startup, but, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I don't have specific tips. It's, uh, it's really about uh, getting organized, trying not to have too many calls, trying to uh, um, uh, find times to, to, do, to work on like, deeper things and take a step back and look at your strategy and not always be uh, headfirst um, into everyday problems. And do you think there is a difference between, so to say, a climate startup than a usual startup in that way? I mean, in today's world, I would say that uh, we don't feel the crisis as hard as the other yeah. startups. Uh, our customers have a lot of challenges uh, which are encouraging for our business and encouraging for the planet, uh, but, uh, which means that today we are not struggling to find customers because uh, they need to answer to new regulations coming, for example, the CSRD in Europe. Uh, they need to figure out how to measure the emissions of their supply chain. So more and more uh, companies will re uh, measure their emissions. So we are kind of like, I wouldn't say, uh, anti-cyclical, uh, but, yeah, uh, but we're kind of protected, yeah. <laughs> you're in the right time at the right spot, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I think other startups might be uh, struggling, and I hear that from, from some peers, and, uh, yeah. and I wish them the best. Uh, I mean, there have been other crises before, uh, but yeah, in climate, we're pretty lucky around that. Perfect. And that leads to the last point, um, your fundraising. Um, you just said that um, you have been quite, uh, let's say, on the right bought uh, so far, but where yeah. do you stand exactly? So we raised 20 million a year and a half ago and we still have uh, some of that uh, in the bank account, so we don't have immediate needs, uh, but um, we are starting to see interest already for our Series B, so uh, yeah. uh, it's very encouraging. Uh, and again, I feel lucky in this market because it's not easy for everyone. Uh, so, so this might come uh, sometimes in 2024. Nice. And um, what are you looking for in a, in a perfect investor now for your Series B? Um, I think we need someone who, uh, who is a global investor. Yeah. Uh, so we used uh, the, the proceeds from our Series A to expand in the US uh, and the UK. Yes. The US is a tough market for climate uh, because uh, at the opposite, at, uh, as any other industry, uh, they tend to be a bit late on what we do in Europe. So we are already there, but the market is not fully mature. So we need someone who will be able to, make us, uh, to, to help us accelerate in the US, but at the same time, who understands uh, how critical this issue is. And so for that, it's, it's easier to have someone who has a strong uh, foothold in, uh, in Europe. Yes, absolutely. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, <laughs> Valérie. Thank <laughs> you.